everyone, it's Katrina. From magical mountains filled with hummingbirds to sinkholes haunted by man-eating spirits, here are 11 amazing places you won't believe exist. Number 11. Abraham Lake, Canada Located along the North Saskatchewan River in Alberta, Canada, Abraham Lake was created in 1972 as part of the Trans Alta Corporation's construction of the Bighorn Dam. At 20 miles long and occupying a surface area of 20.7 square miles, it's Alberta's largest man-made lake, and it is famous for its unique turquoise color, thanks to an influx of sediments from glacial erosion. During winter, Abraham Lake freezes over, trapping methane bubbles that create crystal-like formations below the surface. Methane is released into the lake when organic matter, like dead plants and animals, sinks to the bottom of the lake, causing the gas to form and rise to the top of the water. When the lake thaws in the spring, the bubbles release methane into the atmosphere. However beautiful, these methane bubbles are dangerous, according to environmental scientists, not least because the greenhouse gas is 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Researchers fear that this contributes to climate change, especially since they expect the lake to continue releasing releasing methane indefinitely. Man-made lakes tend to emanate more methane than natural water bodies because they are created by filling dry land, which is often full of organic matter with water. Experts are also concerned because methane is highly flammable, a quality that all too often does more harm than good to the environment. Number 10. Buzludza Monument, Bulgaria Located in central Bulgaria, the derelict Buzludza Monument, also called the Monument House of the Bulgarian Communist Party, was built in the 1970s. It is located high on a ridge on a battle site in honor of fallen Bulgarian heroes. Over 6,000 people contributed to building the structure, with many students camping out helping to build the dream. Now it has become the subject of debate as Bulgaria tries to decide what to do with the monuments of its socialist past. Since joining the EU, it doesn't want to remind everyone of its socialist rule. Like many other state-built communist structures, the Buzludza monument boasts a futuristic architectural style. It looks like a flying saucer was left behind. The interior contains over 10,000 square feet of space dedicated to the Bulgarian Communist Party and covered in mosaics, including the characteristic hammer and sickle communist symbols. When democracy spread across Eastern Europe and Bulgaria more specifically during the 1990s, the Buzludza monument fell largely out of favor. It was abandoned and has not been maintained, resulting in at least 20% of its mosaics, as well as its copper ceiling, disappearing, while other parts of the structure fell into disrepair. There have been numerous campaigns to save the monument, but the building remains unmanaged and in a decaying state. Urban explorers have managed to get in and take pictures. Supposedly, there is a hole in the cement floor that leads to the basement, and from there you can take the stairs to the main hallway. However, of course, it is at your own risk. Number 9. Valle de Cocora, Colombia this is one of the few places I'm going to tell you about that I've actually been to. The Cocora Valley in Colombia's Los Nevados National Park is home to fields of the world's tallest palm tree species, the Palma de Cera, or the Quindío wax palm, which is highly endangered. Also the country's national tree, wax palms grow nearly 200 feet tall. Within the Cocora Valley's mountainous forest is the Bosque de las Palmas, or the Forest of the Palms, a collection of towering Quindío wax palms set against even taller mountains, with cattle freely grazing all around. Reaching this area requires a several-hour hike along one of four trails, which can be challenging, especially if it has been raining. The weather here is known for being extremely unpredictable, and if it's sunny in the morning, be sure to take a raincoat. The nearest town is called Salento, a charming, picturesque village reminiscent of Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 years of solitude. You can take a willy jeep ride to the Cocora Valley from there, or of course you can go by horse or bicycle, although you'd better be in good shape. The valley is home to all kinds of wildlife including hummingbirds, parrots, mountain tapir, spectacled bear, sloths, puma, and whatever these little guys are. We went up the mountain on horseback and it was one of the most magical places in the world. I highly recommend. And now for number 8, but first want to give a big thank you to Jeff Eigenberger and Cheryl Simmons for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let us know your dream place to visit in the comments below. Number 8. 
Red Beach, China. Situated in the Liaho River Delta in the world's largest wetland and reed marsh, the Panjin Red Beach in Dawa County, China is a protected area that's home to over 400 wild animals, including endangered species, and it serves as a migratory stopover for at least 260 different types of birds. Composed primarily of shallow seas and tidelands, the reed-covered landscape is best known for its vibrant red hue, which it gets from a plant called sueda, also sometimes called seepweed. Sueda is unique because it's one of few plants that can survive in the region's highly acidic alkaline saline soil. It begins growing in April and May, remains green throughout the summer, and takes on its famous crimson shade during the fall. Fun fact, known for its high quality, the short grain rice that grows here was recognized as the official rice of the 2008 Beijing Winter Olympics. I didn't know that the Olympics had an official rice. What does that mean exactly? Most of the Red Beach, which gained state-level protection in 1988, is closed to the public. A small portion of it is accessible to visitors, however, offering non-invasive views of the beautiful scenery. It's important for people to keep a safe distance from the ecosystem, as the fragile wildlife at the Red Beach is threatened by nearby industry, including seafood farms and rice paddies, which compete for space and other natural resources, as well as an oil field, which has obvious potential to cause environmental damage by default of what it is. Number 7. Devil's Bridge, Germany While its name is admittedly unsettling, the Rakotsbruck Devil's Bridge in Kromlau, Germany is paradoxically serene. Set against a backdrop of lush foliage and Kromlauer Park, the arched structure was deliberately built so that its reflection in the water below connects with the bridge to form a circular illusion. Like similar structures throughout Europe, it's nicknamed the Devil's Bridge due to the belief that it was so bizarrely spectacular that Satan must have built it. But the construction was built by human hands and with local stone after the local town's knight commissioned it in 1860. The bridge is more aesthetic than practical, hence its tendency to draw spectators who stop by on day trips from Berlin during their travels to Germany from other parts of the world. But visitors are not allowed to cross the bridge for the sake of preserving it, and ongoing renovations have drained the lake it sits over and littered the site with construction equipment until further notice. The ongoing project is expected to continue for several years, which is disappointing, but the good news is that the site will eventually be restored to its former glory. Number 6. Sentinels of the Arctic Finland Every winter, the trees in the Finnish Lapland region freeze over with ice and snow, taking on mystifying shapes and earning them a reputation as the guardians of the north. Otherworldly images of the phenomenon were taken by Italian photographer Niccolo Bonfadini, who traveled to the region and endured sub-freezing temperatures of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to capture his snapshots. Bonfadini titled his series Sentinels of the Arctic, and one of the captivating images was even featured on NASA's Astronomy Picture of the Day website. The snow and ice-covered trees themselves are not the landscape's only breathtaking features. Set against a backdrop of soft colors amid the sunset, including various shades of blue, rose, and violet, and a distinct pink band across the sky, the sentinels nearly accentuate a stunning natural phenomenon known as the Belt of Venus. Number 5. Mono Lake, California Occupying a 70-square-mile area at the edge of North America's Great Basin, Mono Lake is an ancient saline lake with an abnormally high salt content measuring roughly twice as much as the ocean. Consequently, there are no fish in the lake, and its water-dwelling organisms are limited largely to brine shrimp and alkali flies. The surrounding landscape is dominated by cottonwood and willow trees and strange limestone formations called tufa towers dot the lakeshore's shallow waters. Before the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power DWP, began began diverting water from the streams that feed Mono Lake in 1941, the lake was far less saline and was more capable of supporting life. Between then and 1990, Lake Mono lost half its volume, dropping around 45 feet. People noticed that Mono Lake was undergoing a damaging transformation long before DWP stopped draining water from it. In 1978, the Mono Lake Committee formed with the goal of saving the lake. The group's efforts paid off when in 1994, the California State Water Resources Control Board ordered DWP to let Lake Mono's water levels rise to 6,392 feet above sea level. As of August 1st of this year, the lake's water had risen to 6,382 feet. Almost there! Number 4. The Sinkholes, Venezuela In Venezuela's Jawa Sari Sariñama National Park, near the Brazilian border, sits a tabletop mountain, or tepui, called Cerro Sari Sariñama. The heavily wooded tepui is located
located hundreds of miles from the nearest road in one of the country's most remote regions. There are four gigantic sinkholes on Cerro Sarisariñama, the largest among them being Sima Humboldt, which measures up to 1,155 feet wide and 1,030 feet deep, and Sima Martel, which is around 814 feet deep. The two are located just 3,000 feet from one another, where they are completely surrounded by thick, imposing foliage. These large holes were believed by the native people to be haunted. An evil spirit that lived off of human flesh inhabited the mountain, and as he ate, he would make the noise, Sari. Sari. The dense jungle, the mist, and the desolation only adds to the eeriness and mystery of the place. A pilot named Harry Gibson discovered the sinkholes in 1961, but the first organized expedition into Sima Humboldt did not happen until 1974. The crew learned the hard way that the sinkhole expands towards the bottom, and they became stranded for several days before being rescued. During their time spent trapped at the bottom of Sima Humboldt, the researchers found themselves in a new world full of never-before-seen endemic species found no else on Earth, who have evolved at the bottom of the sinkhole since its creation, completely isolated from the rest of the world. Unfortunately, the sinkholes of Cerro Sarisariñama remain largely understudied because they are extremely difficult to access. Number 3. Rainbow River, Colombia Caño Cristales is a 62.1-mile-long Colombian river located in the country's Serrania de la Macarena National Park. Nicknamed the River of Five Colors and the Liquid Rainbow, it boasts vivid colors along the riverbed including red, yellow, green, blue, and black. From June to November, the moderate months between the extreme dry and wet seasons. I haven't been there myself, unfortunately. Maybe next time. The dazzling array of colors results from the reproductive process of aquatic river weeds called Macarenia clavigera. This particular phenomenon, which occurs in a region rife with biodiversity and chock full of endemic species, is observed nowhere else in the world. Colombia's tourism board is taking measures to protect the river as tourists flock to take in its natural beauty. In an effort to preserve the area, the board imposed a daily limit of 200 visitors, with each group numbering no more than seven, and people are not allowed to enter the river's designated swimming areas wearing sunscreen or bug spray. The effort to balance the tourism economy with conservation stands in stark contrast to the situation prior to 2016, when the area was controlled by FARC guerrillas and therefore off-limits to pretty much everyone. Number 2. Koe Kohe Beach, South Island, New Zealand a series of spherical gray boulders resembling dinosaur eggs, known as the Moraki boulders, dot the coastline along Koe Kohe Beach on New Zealand's South Island. The large rocks are known as septarian concretions, which are hard, compact masses of matter that form when mineral cement fills spaces between particles in soil or sedimentary rock. Septarian concretions contain septaria, which are angular calcite-filled cavities or cracks at the center of the boulder. The boulders are exposed by way of waves eroding the looser surrounding material. Around two-thirds of the 60-million-year-old rocks measure between 4.9 and 7.2 feet in diameter, and the smaller remaining third have diameters of 1.6 to 3.3 feet. Maori legend offers a different explanation for the Moraki boulder's origins. According to the story, the rocks represent the remains of sweet potatoes, eel baskets, and calabashes that washed ashore when the Arai Te Uru, a large sailing canoe carrying their ancestors to the South Island, sank. In addition to the Moraki boulders, Koe Kohe Beach hosts numerous unique wildlife species, including yellow-eyed penguins, a seal colony, and Hector's dolphins. Number 1. Socotra, Yemen Located in the Indian Ocean between Somalia and Yemen, Socotra is an archipelago so isolated that a third of its wildlife is found nowhere else on Earth including plant and animal species that died out long ago elsewhere. The territory, which is governed by Yemen, sits 60 miles north of the Horn of Africa at the entrance to the Gulf of Aden. Nicknamed the Galapagos of the Indian Ocean, Socotra is home to 307 endemic plant species, comprising 37% of the total plant population. Many of these plants are noticeably strange, or at least unique, including the dragon's blood tree, as well as Adenium socotranum, a pink flower tree with a trunk resembling an elephant's leg. There are 11 endemic bird species, including the Socotra starling, the Socotra sunbird, and the Socotra grosbeak, and the only endemic mammals are bats. Over 90% of the mollusks and reptiles on the island are endemic, according to National Geographic. Archaeologists have found evidence of human occupation on Socotra dating back to the 2nd century, and some even believe that the bizarrely beautiful island is where the Garden of Eden existed. Socotra is currently affected by war, and its future remains uncertain as it 
it is currently occupied by separatists who recently deposed the Yemeni government. Between the civil war and the ongoing global COVID-19 pandemic, now unfortunately isn't exactly the most ideal time to visit the island paradise. Thanks for watching! Have you ever been to any of these places? Or which one would you like to visit? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you soon! Bye!